All right, Bolo Buddies, I was not expecting to find this Bolo today at the Goodwill Bins. Uh, it was unexpected, and it sat for a long time in a bag, and I finally listed it, and it flew out of my eBay store, and we are going to talk about that in this video. But first, I would like to say welcome to the channel. This is a Goodwill Bins video where I shop add items to my cart and pay by the pound. If you have never been to a Goodwill Bins outlet, let me know down in the comments and put any questions you may have. And after watching this video, let me know if you wanna go or you want to stay away. Also, I ask that everybody participates and puts down in the chat anything that, I shouldn't say chat, in the comments, anything they see that I should have picked up to sell on a platform or maybe just an item you would have picked up for personal use. Uh, it's always fun to see what everybody would have picked up. Uh, you guys are usually screaming at the screen telling me, oh my goodness, I would have got that, or you left that behind. I can't believe you left that behind. So really, it's just uh, it's a treat to read the comments. So you guys, if you're watching, make sure you go down and check out what everybody else would have picked up that I left behind. There is a lot of trash or items that are broken in the Goodwill bins. I do suggest that you wear a glove. Um, mine is, I think, like cut proof or cut resistant. I'm not sure what it's called. But basically, it just keeps you from getting poked or cut by things that are in the Goodwill bins. A lot of times, like kitchen utensils and uh, tools and different things like that. There was one time there was a cheese grater that almost got me. <laughs> so... Uh, just a, a glove is a good idea in my opinion. But I know that the clothing resellers that shop at the bins, a lot of times they don't wanna wear gloves because they wanna feel the fabric. This is a code a pillar. I love finding these. You can list them lots of different ways and I'm showing you some examples of how I listed them. I listed this one complete showing it's working. Two of the bodies didn't work, so I went ahead and just put the battery compartments up for sale. I did have one link listed separately and then multiple links linked together. I cannot believe that there were three of them sitting in the bins all together. Now, we're going to get to the bolo I found, and it, it was really unexpected. I had to use Google Lens to figure out what it was, but I just had a hunch and I picked it up, and we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. But the Caterpillar, I have sold many, many times. So they do kind of range. Um, I've got mine priced a little high, but I do take best offers. So on eBay, what I typically do is price my items on the higher end, I run a sale, and I send out offers, and I also look at offers that are sent to me from buyers, potential buyers. And I would say, 90 plus percent of my items sell by best offer. So I am definitely open to offers in my eBay store. Let me know how you guys do it. I also do not offer free shipping, uh, buyer pays shipping on eBay. Now I cross post my items with List Perfectly to Poshmark and Mercari. I do things a little different on those platforms. But first, if you're not uh, using List Perfectly and you're looking for a cross posting service, I love it. Um, I've been using it since 2019. There's a lot of new updates and features that just came out. I do have a tutorial down below that shows you the basics on how to use it to cross post your items. Check that out and then go and check out all of the new updates because there's the D-list feature and lots and lots of new things. And you can use my referral code BOLOBUDDIES, all one word, lowercase to get 30% off your first month of list perfectly if you watch that video and you feel like it's something that would work well for your business. So uh, Mercari, I do free shipping on most of my items on Mercari. There's no selling fees anymore on Mercari. And I think I did free shipping before that was the case, but I think now with the buyer paying the seller fees, having free shipping is a major um, plus. I think it's going to get more people to look at your items as opposed to somebody that doesn't have free shipping because it's an added fee. So when you're a buyer and you're checking out, you're going to see all of the fees listed. So if there's no shipping fee, that's going to lower the total that's being paid. And because you're a seller and you have no seller fees, you can kind of just offset that cost. 
There's a, lots of items here that I did not pick up. Some of them I'm watching back and I'm like, uh, I probably could have sold that. But you know, when you're at the Goodwill bins and you're filling your cart, you kind of have to be a little bit selective. So free shipping on Mercari. Poshmark, I do um, the buyer pays shipping on Poshmark. And I usually price my items a little higher on Poshmark just because the platform fees are 20%. So if you're not on Mercari and Poshmark and you're thinking about it, I do have referral links down below for those. On Mercari, you'll get $10 to shop when you join and another $20 to shop when you sell $100 worth of items. And that's the promotional offer that's currently going on. They do have a special promotion going on. Uh, I, I think it's going on right now. I'm not sure when it ends. I don't know if that overrides the other one or not. So you'll wanna look into that. But either way, with that code down below, you will get some sort of perk. So definitely check out that referral link. Poshmark, you get $10 to shop if you join with my referral link for that. So those are just some options. There's lots of great platforms that you can sell on. I love picking up small toys. You will see me always digging to the bottom of the bins looking for the small toys. I will pick up remote control um, items and if they don't work, I will sell the remote or I will sell just the bottom piece or the battery compartment. I will part things out. Now, ideally, is that the way to go? I mean, you're not gonna sell a battery cover for a lot of money. So if you like to sell things that are over $10, you're probably not going to list battery covers. However, if you buy an item and it's broke, it's a way to make back probably what you paid for the item by parting it out and trying to make good on some of the product, even though it was broken, if that makes sense. So let me know what you guys do. If you buy an item that's damaged, do you try to make the best of it or do you just chuck it in the trash? Let me know down in the comments. Sometimes I like to just see if I can sell it. Here's another toy. I'm not sure what that one was from. That might have been a Ryan's Place. So anytime uh, Ryan's Place, a lot of times I will lot those up. Also a great item to bring over to Whatnot during a toy show. Uh, if you guys are not on Whatnot, I do have tutorials down below that teach you how to sell on Whatnot if you're thinking about branching out to another platform. They also have a marketplace where you can sell just like the other platforms, your items on the marketplace. Um, I do have a referral link down below for sellers if you are already on Whatnot and you wanna use that. But if you're not already on Whatnot, you can use my referral link and get $15 to shop when you join with that. It's down below in the description. And I would love for you guys to come over to Whatnot and join in on one of my Whatnot shows and hang out in the chat. Get to know some of the regulars. There's always new people chatting it up and we have a really good time. We drink coffee and we have lots of laughs. So come hang out at the Bolo Buddies Whatnot show. And let's keep digging here. Digging, digging, digging. Um, were those rubber bands? I think those were rubber bands. So again, toy show. Should I have another whatnot toy show? I did a whole loving family show. I did Fisher Price Little People. I think I had two of those shows. All three of those shows were really successful. I did those around Christmas time, before Christmas. So it was really good timing for people that were looking for the older vintage discontinued toys for their kids or grandkids. It seems like nowadays more people are buying pre-owned even for Christmas gifts. Do you guys notice that? Um, let me know down in the comments. Do you buy secondhand for Christmas for your family and friends or do you just only buy new items? I am very, very curious to see what you guys would say. Um, I just did a video where I sold something from a white elephant. My uh, mother-in-law coordinates a white elephant uh, every year at Christmas time, and she always thrifts bolos. She is a bolo finder. So whenever we do white elephant, I'm always looking for the items that she brought because I know that I can resell them. I'm like, this is not white elephant. This is good stuff. So um, you can see that in a recent what sold video I did. I did pick through those cards and I did pick up some of them. Some of them were sealed still in the plastic and they were really nice cards. And if you guys don't know, cards are expensive. So I got a whole bunch of these heads, um, 
there's like a clown and an elf and, but right here, hold on, I'm gonna show you. But I lotted all of those up together. I ran it auction style, nobody bought it. So it is currently in my eBay store as a buy it now. And I'm just waiting on the right buyer to come along. Now these right here, I had to do Google Lens to figure out what they were, but I had six of them and I sold them for $108. And I wanna say they sold within two days, maybe less. It was a fast sale, under a week. We'll say under a week to be safe, but it was super quick. And those things are so lightweight. So I probably had a couple bucks in it. So we'll say $3 into $108 on these heads. And I still have uh, the other bundle available. And maybe I should have parted those out into individual listings but I decided to just sell them as one. Now the ones, um, I did list the other ones individually, the ones that sold for 108 and they were made in Japan and they still had the plastic over them. So they were new old stock and somebody sent me an offer to buy all of them. So that 108 you're seeing was not for one single one, that was for all six. So definitely a bolo. And to find something brand new, old stock like that in the bins, not damaged and really nice, pristine condition was just a really cool, unexpected find. So really excited about that bolo that I get to share with you guys because it's definitely not something that I picked up and was like, oh, this is a bolo when I threw it in my cart. I thought, oh, this is made in Japan. It's vintage. It's cool. It's still sealed in the packaging and I'm going to pick this up but no way did I know that it was gonna sell for over $100, so nice little bolo. All right, let's keep digging here, and you're gonna see I'm gonna pick up more toys and more stuff, and I'm gonna throw it in my cart. A lot of times, a lot of those items get put back. Goody, Goody brand is a great brand if you can find hair accessories, some of the old brushes, some of the old Avon brushes also do well. You saw me pick up that brush and look at it, that's why. Uh, sometimes I still look things up, uh, actually a lot of times I still look things up, but there's some things that I just know. My husband uh, brought home some jewelry the other day and he was showing me it and there was a goody hair barrette in there. And I'm like, Ooh, this is a good one. This is definitely a nice little bolo. If you don't know the stay tight, um, is it stay tight? They're hair clips. They're three inches. They look like a faux tortoise shell those are a nice big money bolo look those up and they're made by goody and some of them look the same and they're not signed i don't know if they're goody brand or not but they also sell really well here is an item that i put on whatnot anytime i can pick up dvds that are sealed for you know 50 cents to a dollar i can put it on whatnot for five people can bundle those during a show and if they already have free shipping, they don't pay any additional shipping for those items in the buy it now if they buy it during the show. And if they don't have free shipping, that goes towards their discounted shipping during the show. So I run jewelry and on jewelry, I can do discounted uh, flat rate shipping of $8.35. So what that means is as you buy the jewelry from me, like the first item might be $4, $4.50 for the shipping. And then the next item might be 30 cents. And anyway, it works its way up to 8.35. And once you hit $8.35 in shipping, your shipping is free the rest of the show. So can you source on whatnot? Absolutely. There's lots of people that start their items low. And if nobody bids against you, you can definitely get some items to resell, even if people do bid against you. Um, I've brought a lot of items that I did not know were bolos to whatnot, and people are making money. They've sent me um, screenshots because of what I do here on uh, YouTube. They know that I like to learn and they will share that information with me. So I've seen some of the cool finds that people are getting. And I do the untangling, so I'm basically just pulling the items out of a pile of jewelry and selling them. So a lot of times, there was something last night, a pair of earrings, and we were looking at the back and everybody was looking it up after it sold and uh, somebody said it was a high-end brand. I've never heard of it, but uh, yeah, they said they sell for around $100, I think, and I wanna say they paid eight or $10 for them, so there's definitely some 
meat on the bone with those earrings. But a lot of people on whatnot, you know, they're not necessarily buying to resell. People buy for personal use as well. I would say that I buy to resell and I buy for personal use on whatnot, but it's super, super fun place to be. And again, the chat is so exciting. If you guys have ever watched um, a YouTube uh, live, what's it called? Not a live show. Yeah, a live show or a premiere where you can talk in the chat and you get to meet other people. It's just a really fun environment. So I hope you guys will come hang out if you haven't already. And if you have, thanks so much. I know a lot of you have. I don't know if you guys that come over to Whatnot watch the Goodwill Bins videos, but if you do, drop me a comment down below. Say, I love Whatnot. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love coffee. If you watch me on Whatnot, you'll get that. All right, guys. So I did put that in my cart. I can't remember if I brought that home or not. A lot of the things I throw back. Let me know if you shop at the Bins, if you're a look at what's in your cart and throw things back or if you are a just buy it all and i'll deal with it when i get home <laughs> sometimes it depends on my mood i have gotten home sometimes and i'm like i thought i threw that back and then i make myself list it i'm like you're listing it you bought it you list it or it'll just sit in the bag for months and months and months now looky here i hope that isn't a bolo I know that lots of people have shared stuffed animals that they have sold for big money. Is that one of them? I sure hope not because I left that behind. But if you wanna see some big money stuffed animals plush, I have lots of videos. Type in Bolo Buddies plush. Oh my goodness. And get ready to have your socks knocked off because wow. And I've got tons and tons of what sold videos. So if you just search my uh, YouTube, you're going to see lots and lots of items that you can pick up, hopefully cheap, and sell for a profit. I just want to thank everybody for checking out this video. Let me know if you'd like to see more Goodwill Bins videos. This is the second um, one of this day. So if you go back, uh, there's a video before this, probably last month that I did of part one. So definitely check out part one. And stuffed animals are easy to find. They're usually pretty inexpensive, easy to list, and easy to ship. So I love selling plush. So if you're not selling plush, watch a couple of those big money bolo videos. But I will tell you, lots of plush is just bread and butter, meaning it doesn't sell for very much and it takes a long time to sell, but you can usually get it so cheap that it's worth it, but it does take up a lot of space. So you kind of have to figure out what you want to sell and what works best for you. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I hope to see you over at a whatnot show. And thanks for watching.